Good morning. Welcome to Park Boulevard Church. We are delighted that you are joining us in worship this morning. Whether you are here in the sanctuary or zooming in with us. Today So before we get into God's word, let's come before the Lord in prayer. God, we are so grateful and thankful for all that you have given us. And God, we pray for your spirit now to be with each and every one of us. May the meditations of our hearts and the words of my mouth be pleasing to you, Lord Jesus. In your holy and precious name we pray. Amen. I think I've shared this with you before, but years ago I suffered from a, a very severe depression. And depression is like this, this deep emotional darkness that settles over you. It feels like the whole world is, is closing in on you. It's a very palpable, heavy weight. It can be frightening, and it can be debilitating, and it's a dark dark place to be in. And it seems like there's no escape when you're surrounded by that deep, heavy darkness of depression. 
But God cared, and God intervened. And he began the process of healing me by sending me the light of Christ in the form of another person, a beggar lady, a homeless woman. And I've preached about this encounter with this woman in the past when I preached about leaning on Christ. I talked about how that woman's feet were so mangled that in order for her to walk, she had to lean on me very hard as we walked down the street. But, but what I didn't share about her was that this poor beggar woman had a lightness and a brightness about her that was translucent. There was a light shining through her like an angel. Christ ministered to me and began the process of healing my depression through my encounter with this beggar woman. The light of Christ broke through and began to dissipate my darkness through my interaction with this homeless person. Through God's grace and through time, God eventually healed me of my depression and he made me whole once again. And it all began with a connection with another person and where the light of Christ broke through from one person to another person in deep need. In my work as a palliative care chaplain, and I'm, I'm going, Kaiser has asked me to come back, and so I'm going to go back to Kaiser as a part-time chaplain. In my work in palliative care, I minister to the very sick and the dying and their grieving families every day when I'm in the hospital. Sometimes I, I, I sat with people of all faiths while they were in the process of dying, and I accompanied them as they made their transition from this life to the next. I often tell people that, that a part of my ministry is to midwife death. Midwives assist in bringing life into the world, and, and I assist in midwife souls as they leave this world. It's a very sacred and tender space to be in, which I'm grateful for. But in my experience, there seems to be, to me, to be no greater darkness than death. When death arrives, the body shuts down completely. Everything stops. Silence and darkness completely overtake the body. Yet, for the Christian... The hope of eternal life through Jesus Christ, the light of the world, breaks through the overwhelming darkness of death. Nothing can diminish the light of Christ, not illness, not disease, not even death. The glorious light of Christ shines through and penetrates all of it, eventually bringing healing and wholeness, and new life. Oftentimes, because of what I do, I enjoy reading about uh, near-death experiences. And so I want to share with you a little story from uh, one of my favorite books about near-death called Embraced by the Light. It's about this woman, Betty Jean Eady, who, di who died and uh, went to heaven and was told it's not your time, you've got to come back. So she, reluctantly, she came back. And, and she wrote about her encounter. And this is what she says about the light of Christ. Listen to this. I saw a pinpoint of light in the distance. The black mass around me began to take on more of the shape of a tunnel. This is, she had passed away now, and she's moving through the tunnel. And I felt myself traveling through it at an even greater speed rushing toward the light. I was instinctively attracted to it. Although, again, I felt that others might not be. As I approached it, I noticed the figure of a man standing in it, with the light radiating all around him. As I got closer, the light became brilliant, 
brilliant beyond any description, far more brilliant than the sun. And I knew that no earthly eyes in their natural state could look upon this light without being destroyed. Only spiritual eyes could endure it and appreciate it. As I drew closer, I began to stand upright. I saw that the light immediately around him was golden, as if his whole body had a golden halo around it. And I could see that the golden halo burst out from around him and spread into a brilliant, magnificent whiteness that extended out for some distance. I felt his light blending into mine, literally. And I felt my light being drawn to his. It was as if there were two lamps in a room, both shining their light, merging together. It's hard to tell where one light ends and the other begins. They just become one light. Although his light was much brighter than my own, I was aware that my light, too, illuminated us. And as our lights merged, I felt as if I had stepped into his countenance, and I felt an utter explosion of love. It was the most unconditional love I have ever felt. And as I saw his arms open to receive me, I went to him and received his complete embrace and said over and over, I'm home, I'm home, I'm finally home. I felt his enormous spirit and knew that I had always been a part of him that in reality I had never been away from him. And I knew that I was worthy to be with him, to embrace him. I knew that he was aware of all my sins and faults, but that they didn't matter right now. He just wanted to hold me and share his love with me. And I wanted to share mine with him. There was no questioning who he was. I knew that he was my savior and friend, and God, he was Jesus Christ, who had always loved me, even when I thought he hated me. He was life itself, love itself, and his love gave me a fullness of joy, even to overflowing. I knew that I had known him from the beginning, from long before my earthly life, because my spirit remembered him. I love that passage. I love the description of the light of Christ as being far more brilliant than the sun and that when you are in his countenance, you feel an utter explosion of love. In our gospel reading today, John the Baptist gives witness to that light, the light of Christ that has entered this world and has eternally pierced the oppressive darkness of this world, the spirit of this age. God called John to be a witness to that light, to testify to the light. John was faithful to that calling, and so God blessed his ministry, and people came from all around way out into the desert, to hear John's witness and to receive his baptism. The word that's used repeatedly in this text that is translated into witness or testify is the Greek word martyria. And that's where we get the word martyr from. And and the word martyr means to tell the truth, to give evidence to the truth. God called John to witness, to testify, to tell the truth, about the one who is coming, the Messiah of God. John stood firm when he was being cross-examined by the priests and the Levites from Jerusalem, never once diminishing his testimony about Christ. Now God calls all of us to a ministry very much like John's. God calls all of us, not just preachers, but all of us to bear witness to Christ, to tell others about Christ, to draw others toward Christ, to share with others about the source of the hope 
that lies within you. Our witness today about Christ plants the seeds of the church for tomorrow. If we do not tell others about Christ, how will they know of him? We were all brought to Christ because somewhere, someone along the line told us about Jesus Christ. I learned about Christ because an uncle of mine pulled me aside one day and told me about Jesus Christ. And I gave my life to Christ not long after that. Matthew 28, 19, Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. That's our calling. There's a wonderful old legend about uh, St. Francis and uh, Brother Juniper. Brother Juniper says to St. Francis, he says, teach me to preach as eloquently as you, as I am not good with words. St. Francis said, I I will teach you to preach more eloquently than I. Meet me tomorrow morning, and I shall teach you to preach about Jesus. So Brother Juniper dutifully met Francis early the next morning, and to Brother Juniper's surprise, they just started walking around the town. They walked through the marketplace, smiling at people, cheerfully greeting the laborers, the merchants, and the children. They helped an old woman carry her wash up a flight of stairs. And then finally, uh, an exasperated Brother Juniper asked Francis, when are you ever going to teach me how to preach? And St. Francis replied, why, Brother Juniper, we are preaching. We give witness to Christ when we obey his commandments to love one another. It means that we give witness to Christ when we show compassion for the poor and the vulnerable. It means that our service to others in the name of Christ is very much like John's preaching in the wilderness. It might not seem like preaching at all because At first, there was nobody there to hear his sermons, at least in the beginning. But when John was faithful to his calling out in the desert to cry out in the wilderness, God blessed his ministry and people came out. If you're faithful to your calling to witness to Christ in loving service to another, even if it doesn't seem like much and it's insignificant, God will bless your ministry and draw others to Christ through you. Amen? You see, the the light of Christ is within you. And it shines through you and outward to others, whether you're aware of it or not. The light of Christ is shining through you. Like that light of Christ that shone through that beggar woman and ministered to me. The light of Christ shines through you and ministers to other people. Christ is working through you. The wonderful historical novelist, uh, Christian Eugenia Price, put it this way. If Christ lives in us, controlling our personalities, we will leave glorious marks on the lives we touch not because of our lovely characters, but because of his. You know, indeed, our our lives speak loudly either for or against Christ. We bear witness either for or against Christ every day in everything we do. People are watching you. Now, most people, especially today, aren't ever going to read the Bible. And most people today aren't ever going to set foot inside a church. I think those days are behind us. You may very well be the only scripture and the only church that people ever see 
in their entirety of their lives. And they cannot help but notice how we live, how we love, and how we serve one another in our kindness, in our compassion, in our generosity, in our hospitality, in our grace, and our mercy. I'll end with uh, this old poem. You are writing a gospel, a chapter each day, by the deeds that you do and the words that you say. People read what you write, if it's false or it's true. Now what is the gospel according to you? Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we pray that by your grace, your light dwells deeply within each one of us and shines brightly through us and outward to others to minister to them for your glory and for the edification of your church. In your holy and precious name we pray, amen. Please stand as we sing, Let All Things Now Living. Um, If you'd like to follow along, it's in the dark blue hymnal, number 554. triumphantly raise who fashioned and made us protected and stayed us by guiding us on to the end of our days god's banners are us pure light goes before us a pillar of our shining forth in the shadows have vanished all fearfulness banished as forward we traveled from light into light by law god and forces the stars in their courses the sun in its orbit obediently shine the hills and the and fountains, the depths of the ocean, proclaim God divine. We too should be voicing our love and rejoicing with glad adoration, a song let us raise till all things now living unite in thanksgiving to God in the Thank you, Mary. That was lovely. I have not heard that before. I love that hymn. God's banners are orva, over or us. Pure light goes before us. A pillar of fire shining forth in the night till shadows have vanished and darkness is banished. As forward we travel from light into light. Now receive this blessing. Be the light of Christ this week as you move from here and into the week. May the God of all peace sanctify you through and through. May your bodies, souls, and spirits be kept safe and pure until the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The one who has called you is faithful, and he will do it. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.
show up. 